Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. And welcome to my mess. The first order of business is to clean up this big mess so I can start my next project. have an exciting announcement to make this week. I am going to start working on a very big mosaic project that will take me months and months. And it's so big that I have a partner on the project. So I'm partnering with Jennifer Freeman. She's a mosaic artist that is local to my area and she does a lot of public works. So she's gonna bring a lot to the table and I will link her website in the video description so that she can find out more about Jennifer Freeman and I will be introducing her later in this video. So Jennifer lives a little distance away from me, and so we'll be going back and forth between our studios to kick off this project. So this week is the very beginning. We're going to be getting our layout and our board and transferring the design. I first found out about this project last fall. So there's been a lot of behind the scenes work on it, some presentations, some budgeting, some decisions made by the city. So it's a project for the city of Dunwoody and they have a wall and it, the street that it's on is called Womack. So it's the Womack Wall Project, or it was until we came up with a design. The design that we're doing is called the landscape of Dunwoody and I will share that with you right now. The city of Dunwoody put out a call for art and we responded with some initial designs and then got some feedback from them and came back with some more designs and they selected one and this is the one that they selected. It's called the landscape of Dunwoody and you can see it's got trees and fields and a lot of color and if you look closely it says Dunwoody a little bit hidden in there so that it doesn't really smack you with the word Dunwoody, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. There it is. And the wall itself is almost 36 feet long and it is smaller on one side, as you can see, we overlaid this on a picture of the actual wall. The wall is smaller on one side and then it's a giant wedge and gets bigger on the other side. It's around, I think, 38 inches or so on this side and about 60 inches on the other end. We've been working on this for quite a while. It's had a lot of iterations. This design will have some minor changes just because the, the size of the whole thing has evolved and changed just a little bit, but the overall design and flavor and colors will stay the same. So we're gonna have some purples and greens and some blues in there. It's gonna be a fun project to do. One of the first things I wanna do is take down this old project. This is sort of what I look at while I'm working. And put up the new one. So I have a new inspirational view. There we go. 
When I first found out about the wall, it was under construction and I actually spilled my coffee on myself because it's a really, really long wall. I think it's approximately 300 feet long and varying heights all along the way. There's a bit of an angle to it. Just had quite a few challenges. We presented some ways of breaking this wall down so that the whole thing didn't have to have a mosaic on it. And we found out that the city has a standard treatment for retaining walls like this of putting granite on the face. Part of our presentation to the city at one point was to Photoshop grass and granite on the wall around our design. In the end, the city's budget allowed for a mosaic of this size on the wall. And so it was sprayed out just so that we could get an idea of it before they put the granite up. The wall recently was just finished with the granite. It has a top cap on it and it is ready to roll. And here she is, Jennifer. <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> Hello. Hello. So Jennifer and I have been working behind the scenes for several months on this project. And I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. We're in the planning stages and we're about to order materials. Hopefully they'll be ordered, most of them, this week. And then we'll get cracking on it. Introducing the landscape of Dunwoody. 35 feet, 10 inches long. 161 square feet. It says Dunwoody, sort of hidden in a graphic way in the landscape with the letters. And it's gonna be a fun project. Right now we're having a strategic materials selection meeting because it's gonna be mixed media. I think we're gonna be using ceramic and glass and it's gonna be a fun project decision that Jennifer and I have made is that for these trees we will be using some fused elements similar to this in the different greens so that means I need to make some more fused elements I've made quite a few so I'm just gonna walk through them now when I made these we didn't have our template yet to see how they fit and how they look and since we have made these I've decided that we're the next ones that I make are first of all gonna be smaller because they are just more prone to break if they're bigger. And so the, if they're smaller, there's better integrity. So I'm gonna be making them smaller because of that. But also I'm gonna not have such big holes. So to make them a little bit more dense in the color department, more like this one. I'm still gonna use this one, but I'm not gonna make any more like this that have such big holes. They'll all be more like this, only smaller. So I'm gonna use this as the base color for my next set and let me get after it. things to know about this whole process is that first of all the glass has to be compatible and in this case I'm using COE or coefficient of expansion 96 so it's COE 96 glass it's all the same that means when it melts together it's compatible and it will fuse properly and there won't be any spontaneous breakage later so that's very very important the second of all is that this is the size of my kiln shelf so I have a small kiln and this is how big I can do one batch this size and I have put shelf paper on my kiln shelf so you you have to prepare the kiln shelf so that the glass doesn't stick to it this shelf paper I have used multiple times and this might be the last time I can use it because it's starting to look a little frayed and worn and I don't want my glass to stick to the shelf but um, I think I can get one more firing out of it so I'm going to go for it and I'm going to make my pieces. I'm going to use this dark green glass as the base glass and then I'm going to put these two colors on. 
So that's what I've been doing so far. Every one of these has a base glass and then two colors of um, speckles on them. Here we go. The way this works is anything that's touching will melt together and it will round out. It will come out something like this. Now there is a little bit of unpredictability as things melt, they shift a little and things might touch that I don't want to touch, but it's all good in the end because we can always cut it if we need to since this is a mosaic. The tricky part will be me moving this very, very carefully into the kiln so that it doesn't I don't want to knock it because nothing is glued together. Now I could have very used very slight glue, special glue to keep the, the pieces in place, but it's really not necessary as long as I can get it in the kiln without shifting it around and knocking anything. Here I go. did shift just a tiny bit so I'm gonna make some adjustments and then I'll program my kiln. I think it's just a whole different ball game when you compare it to mosaics. It's, it has to be very precise and whatnot. So you have to follow a fusing schedule. This is what I've been following if you know anything about fusing and so I'm going to program this into the kiln again and it's going to probably be ready tomorrow night. So I ran this test in May and I didn't have any problem with it, so I'm just gonna do the same one again. So I have programmed the kiln and it shows me the temperature that it's on. It will, see, and it's going up. You can tell because it went from 152 to 153. So when it gets to a certain temperature, it will hold for a certain amount of time and then it will go up as fast as possible to the next um, temperature, etc. So there's four different temperatures. It's gonna ramp up and ramp down at different rates. Here's my kiln and fire log notebook. And here's the information. This is the glass that I used so that if I want to order more, I'll know which one I got. Um, COE 96 and sort of a little diagram. The project, the episode, because I happen to be recording this one, the time it's starting, and the schedule here. Just to give you an idea, it is now 9 o'clock at night, so it is five hours later and my kiln is now ramping down. So it reached a high temperature of 1420 and it held there for a little bit and then it started to decrease in temperature. That's why I said in the morning it will be ready because it's gonna take a little bit of time for it to cool down. It has to pause at certain points and hold the temperature just so that the integrity of the glass is not compromised as it's cooling down so it doesn't cool down too quickly. All right, it's seven o'clock the next morning and it says complete. Let's take a look. And there they all are. They came out so great. I can see these two are accidentally touching. Oh no, let's see. Yeah, so they fuse together. I might use them like that, we'll see. Probably I'll cut it though. That's funny too. <laughs> Looks good. All right, so the task today is to put our paper template over our hardy backer template and start to trace the design. Right, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you where we're at with that. Hold on. Well, here we are. This is our design and underneath we have already have our hardy backer board cut to fit the opening that was built in the wall. So the hardy backer board is correct. The template, the paper template is a little bit off because the entire thing is a giant wedge with the top angled and the bottom angled and that end a little bit shorter than this end. 
So this end, what's the measurement at this end? I think it's 58 inches. About 58 inches. And down at that end, it's about 30, 38 inches. That's where our paper template got a little bit off because we, we never measured those angles. But the hardy backer template is correct. So we're going with the hardy backer template. We're gonna get our pattern on there as close as possible and get to tracing. So the format of the actual dimensions on the wall have changed a couple times. That is going to have some ramifications to the design. And one of, this is probably one of the biggest changes. This is the end panel, number 12 of 12, and we've got the field lines going that way, and we are going to shift them. I think they go off into space because that's the end of the design. So instead, we're gonna have them come down this way and they're gonna terminate nicely and they won't lead your eye up and off. Instead, it'll be a nice ending point right here. So this is a big change right here. The rest of the changes are more minor. seven pieces of this uh, traced onto the substrate. This one's not traced and there's three more in the garage. So that's a good start and I'm off to teach and she's off to do something else. So <laughs> catch up with you next time. It's the next day. I'm back in my studio. Jennifer is going to finish tracing the designs today and I'm going to make some more of the fused glass inclusions to put in the tree area. So today the color that I'm using is this Celadon glass. I think it's made by Spectrum. It's all, again, uh, COE 96. And because it's such a gray shade of green, it, it is sort of green, but I'm going to be adding uh, some green bits, this one and this one, to give it more of a green cast. Oh, I'd have to still cut this one down, and then I'm going to get after it. The great thing about this fused glass is that it's very free form and organic. So I can just have a lot of fun with it. You can buy for it from glass suppliers, but I wanted a lot of different colors and just a little bit of each one. I want those big chunky pieces too, which I think is, uh, they come in different sizes. You can get really small. You can get down to even a powder and a paint, but I like these big pieces because they show up. We have a big scale project, so they need to be very visible. Another nice thing about the, the uh, fusing the glass is that if there's some mistake in cutting, or if you say if I scored this wrong incorrectly and scratched the glass, it doesn't matter because when it goes in the kiln, that, that little scratch is gonna be become invisible, so you don't see it. Also infusing, it is important that your glass is very clean. So before I started cutting any of this glass, I, I washed it with soap and water so that it was sparkling. I also did put a fresh piece of kiln paper on here. Hopefully I'll get several firings out of that.
morning. The kiln says that it is complete. The cycle is complete. So let's take a look. Uh, another nice batch. I have to go teach classes, so I'll have to clean these out later. So good. This is gonna look amazing. it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.